Ladies and gentlemen, this is your opportunity to ask the Minister questions associated both with policy announcements, um, areas that you believe that uh, the Victorian State Government needs to consider, and, uh, and also just to test the, the robustness of some of the plans that are there. So if you are planning to ask a question, would you raise your hand, uh, clearly state the name of your company, and uh, ensure that your question is nice and concise so we understand what it's about. Thank you. Right from, from the back. My name's Greg Hunt from the Southern Melbourne RDA. Uh, Minister, you made reference to um, the role of COAG and the importance of maintaining the momentum if we're going to reach Energy 2.0. Um, now that One Nation has extra leverage in the federal government, there's going to be a big challenge there, I think, in trying to get the federal government to play the role that we want it to play. I just wonder what you might say to Malcolm Roberts, the new One Nation senator, when you first meet him. Look, um, I think uh, Galileo, Galileo wouldn't be very impressed. <laughs> I think it's very important that... Uh, uh, the comments that have been made have... We, we need to reflect on the fact that I think the comments that have been made have not been received, I think, with a lot of seriousness. And I really don't know that I want to add to um, uh, the, the, the value of any comments that have been made, but simply to say that I think that... Uh, I think Australia's actually gone past that type of thinking. Uh, and I think the expectations of community and businesses are well and truly past that point uh, of, of issues that have been raised uh, by that particular senator. Thank you. I think we have a question on the my left hand side. Minister, thank you very much for your uh, your talk. My name is Jason Downs. I'm from Hudson Recruitment. Um, two quick questions, hoping I can get two quick answers. Uh, the first one was with regards to the new Energy Jobs Fund. Is that correct? Uh, I think you said it was allocated $20 million to that fund, and I just wondered if you had any idea of what sort of job creation would come from that. Um, I'll, I'll leave that one with you. And the second one was, I'm just looking at your two portfolios there, uh, energy, environment, and climate change, and the second is suburban development. And I wondered if there's been any policy around a connection of more decentralised schemes, so rather than just large industrial-based renewable energy, whether there's uh, you know, off-the-grid type things or, or smaller versions. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And to the question of the New Energy Jobs Fund, the $20 million investment uh, from our government, uh, it does have a very clear focus on assisting with the, the development of an industry uh, in Victoria. Uh, uh, you're all invited to have a look at the guidelines, but the guidelines have a very clear focus on jobs uh, creation. We've only had one round of that fund that's been made available. Uh, and we are already... Uh, th there's one particular announcement that I, I don't wish to actually make here uh, as a result uh, of that first round, but uh, there will be uh, significant growth <coughs> in jobs as a result of that, uh, the availability of that fund. But we need to understand that that fund is one uh, plank uh, of a whole range of initiatives that our government will be, is bringing together to actually drive uh, investment and, and jobs growth uh, in renewable energy. Uh, the, I think the other part of the question was about suburban development portfolio and what does that mean uh, potentially for uh, small grids, mini grids uh, in, in new suburbs, uh, existing suburbs. I mean, that, th there's a lot of synergy there uh, and I will certainly ha be having more to say on the portfolio of suburban development in the coming months. Uh, it is a new portfolio uh, and uh, the, way, the way I put it to my department is that we're 18 months behind or it's only just been created. Uh, but certainly uh, we do need to reflect on the fact that distributed energy, uh, how energy is made, where it's produced, how it's used, how it's stored uh, is becoming uh, more democratised. And I think that's the word that we need to use here. And uh, understanding... Uh, that concept means that there is a greater expectation across the community and businesses uh, about we actually, how we actually plan and build our, our suburbs and our cities. And so certainly that will be an element, an important element of policy framework uh, around suburban development. And certainly is a feature of the new uh, energy technology strategy and also importantly on the work that is uh, occurring. There is a, a, a good piece of work that is uh, occurring uh, amongst the states, led by Victoria at the COAG Energy Council uh, on distributed generation, uh, energy storage technologies and how that will uh, impact uh, and how that may uh, need to uh, be uh, 
developed into or, or implemented uh, throughout, throughout the network. Thank you, Mr. Okay, um, Lee Eubank from Friends of the Earth here. Um, just a quick question for the Minister. We've heard some very encouraging um, rhetoric from the new Federal Minister, Josh Frydenberg. I'm just wondering, are there any simple things that he can do at COAG to really prove his credentials um, on renewable energy? Look, I, I, I don't. I mean, Josh is a, a, a good person, a very strong uh, policy uh, proponent, uh, and uh, I'm certainly very keen. And we'll look forward to uh, having uh, good conversations about him about what the federal government's vision is uh, beyond 2020. So um, I'm not going to uh, uh, put in his head uh, what what issues he, he should be raising uh, uh, at uh, Coa, except. We do ha need to have some clarity about what the federal government's uh, vision is for 2020. Uh, we can't just stop the train at 2020. I mean, that's the reality. Business, in business needs certainty and it needs a long-term vision uh, for how it needs to invest and where it needs to invest. Uh, as I said, uh, we've got three and a half years left on the clock for renewable energy development uh, under the RET uh, and that stops. Uh, and that is why our mechanism uh, that we've introduced in Victoria is so important uh, to give that longer term certainty and, get, and keep those investment dollars rolling. So I suppose that's a broad uh, message that I would give, but I certainly wouldn't uh, pretend to, um, uh, to, to tell Josh how to, how to do his job. But um, we'll see. The proof will be in the building. Uh, there's been a bit of talk, but certainly we need uh, concrete action now. We have a question down on table eight. Thank you for the uh, information you gave us. You talked about um, going forward and the, uh, the work that's got to be done. Has there been some examination of the regulations that we might need for compliance to give industry good guidance in terms of design and safety and other aspects like that? Also, are there urban planning considerations that you might need to put in the strategy. Sorry, Mike Erskine, GHD. Yeah. No, thank you. And, and the issue about uh, reliability and security uh, of, of supply and how we deal with, uh, how we absorb the technological changes uh, in our existing uh, electricity uh, network is, is vital. And that is why once you have a look at our discussion paper that should be online soon, you will say, see that there is reference and, and seeking uh, views about how, uh, how we need to have a mind to, uh, as, as we run our auctions uh, for renewable energy build, uh, what are the considerations that we need to uh, have uh, and changes that may need to arise uh, as a result of uh, those, those particular issues of, of having a lot of renewable energy coming into, into uh, the network. So we're very alive to that uh, and uh, we're very keen to ensure that the VRED is a successful uh, process uh, and one that uh, does allow us to identify as early on as we can uh, the regulatory uh, barriers or the regulatory changes that we need to uh, make to ensure that we continue to have a reliable and safe and secure supply of electricity. Thank you. So, Question on table three. Thank you, Minister, for your sharing your vision today. Definitely see a clear support for clean energy. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, what are your uh, thoughts and commitments around technology development innova and innovation in Victoria? Uh, our new energy technology strategy is exactly about that. Uh, and so uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, I really do recommend that you go to the government website. Uh, on, uh, on that. Uh, it has a very strong industry focus, industry development focus. Uh, it deals with all of the, the usual questions about how you develop up uh, uh, an industry that is uh, outward looking, uh, globally focused uh, and, and innovative, uh, right from the issues of skills development, regulatory uh, issues, uh, and, uh, and how you allow, really, uh, the, the facilitation of, of investment and the development of a very, very strong industry. So we are going to be quite shameless about this as a government. We want to see Victoria be the industry home uh, for renewable energy and new energy technologies. Kim Burgermeister from, Kim Burgermeister from Arab. Um, we've talked a lot 
today about new energy, and I understand the focus is on that today. Is there anything in the action plan that might address uh, the ability to have old, dirty energy generators exit the market in an orderly fashion rather than a disorderly fashion? The, the short answer is that the Renewable Energy Action Plan is, is really about growing renewable energy. However, of course, I, I acknowledge, and, and none of us can, can not acknowledge, the, uh, that, that issue of what happens with uh, the, the old generation, if you like. Uh, this is, uh, and, and there's been a lot of discussions and, and articles and, and ideas or models that have been thrown out, uh, uh, thrown out uh, for discussion uh, over recent months about how we can manage, if you like, an orderly transition. But I will say to you that uh, these are businesses that have got shareholders and, and they make decisions based on uh, good business sense. Uh, in terms of an orderly transmission, uh, the Victorian government doesn't own assets. We don't own generation assets. For, so for us to think that we could actually be on the inside of a decision that may be made one day uh, by one of those existing uh, coal-fired generators uh, would be uh, a mistake. I mean, we just don't have that inside presence. Uh, but having said that, uh, there is uh, an obligation on state and federal governments to understand uh, and read the signs. We know that many of uh, uh, f fossil fuel intensive uh, generation uh, businesses right across the globe have pronounced their positions, they've made clear what their intentions are in the long term to either, uh, in, in terms of either the purchase of uh, new uh, electricity generation uh, or the build of new uh, electricity generation. And all of the key players, including those in the valley, uh, have drawn a line under any future for either new or purchasing uh, existing coal fire generation. So we know that. Uh, and they've made those pronouncements. So it is uh, incumbent on governments, uh, and not just a state government, to understand um, the regulatory, what, what, what that triggers in terms of uh, consequences for uh, the network, uh, understand and uh, liaise with the uh, market operator, but importantly, uh, uh, get an understanding and a commitment from the federal government that this is something that all of us have to be prepared to address. One of the key issues, of course, uh, will be uh, social dislocation uh, and job losses. That's going to be probably the most critical issue. Um, we know that there is a, a large oversupply of electricity in the market, whether uh, an exit uh, in the short term, the near uh, future of one of the generators uh, uh, has any impact on supply. Uh, I think most people would say that it won't really impact on supply. It will impact on price, of course, but supply is another question. So in terms of certainty of supply, that's an issue which doesn't seem to have any real uh, cause for concern at the moment. The most difficult one will be uh, the dislocation and the loss of employment in a localised sense. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm conscious that CEDA always prides itself on uh, keeping to time. So we have time for just one more question, if I may. Hi, um, Matt Aquilina from Brimbank City Council. Um, we're in the second iteration of our greenhouse strategy. Um, we've set really aggressive uh, emissions reduction targets, 50% within a 10 year period. Um, we're neck deep in energy efficiency works. We've been in that space for about 10 years. Moving forward, this is perhaps more of a, a statement than a question. Looking forward, we need around two and a half megawatts of investment in renewable energy to meet our, to meet our target. So what I'm looking uh, for from the state government, and I'm probably, I'm perhaps speaking on behalf of the local government sector, because a lot of us are in a similar space, is for the state government to really enable investment, to open up opportunities, to open up trials of uh, renewable energy. Um, we have mapped out 14 square kilometres of roof space in Melbourne's west, opening up uh, differing ownership models around renewable energy, et cetera. It's that sort of leadership that we need, because we're, we're, we're ready to go. 
Well, look, uh, if you haven't engaged thus far with my department, I, I urge you to do that uh, as quickly as you can. So I'd be very interested to hear of what those models are. Uh, and there may be models that uh, would be would be of interest across the local government sector. So I'm absolutely keen to... I mean, we're not the font of all knowledge. Uh, we're not a, a top-down... Uh, this isn't about being top-down about uh, ideas. Uh, we need to uh, understand that new ideas will continue to evolve uh, and come forward. So I'm very keen to talk to you further about that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm very mindful that the whole debate about transformation in the energy sector touches on many aspects which often we take for granted on a daily basis. So on your behalf, I would like to thank the minister and her department for the very thorough way that you're, you're tackling the issues in the state of Victoria, understanding the connections not just around energy generation, but the impact upon communities, the impact on transportation, the need for consistency in government policy, and also the, the importance of engaging with the communities in which we're part. So on your behalf, I'd like you um, to join together to thank the Minister again for a very rigorous debate. Thank you.